Happy New Year, and welcome back to Rails Quest. I hope that you had a wonderful December, Merry Christmas, and you've got a great start to your new year in 2025 already. I know I have. I actually took a little bit longer of a break off of posting than I wanted to because, listen, in Arkansas, snow is not guaranteed. And when it snows, you take the opportunity to get out there, go sledding, make snow ice cream with your kids, and build snowmen and snow forts and have lots of snowball fights, right? And that's exactly what I did, no regrets. But I'm really excited to get back to the channel today. Let's just dig right into it. I got a question before the holidays about how do you get these fancy local domains for URLs for your apps that are running locally? So let's take a look at what we're talking about here. This is it, authorlaunch.test. This is running on my local computer right here, vid tweet test. This is running on my local computer. And I even have a SSL, and I can enforce that in the Rails app if I wanted to. But how does that work? That seems kind of magical. Well, I'm going to dispel the myth completely. Trust me, it is not complicated, it is very easy. Let's jump right into it. So here we have the Puma Dev Project. This is the tool that I use to host my apps in such a way that I get these fancy URLs. I've got the name of the app dot test. So author launch dot test, vid tweet dot test. How does does this work? The beauty of it is you don't really need to know too much about the details. We're going to show you just how you install the tool and you run a command and you're good to go. If you're not aware, Rails runs on a server by default called Puma. And this is an HTTP server that interfaces with the actual web and passes the requests to Rails. And it handles that in an efficient way. And it uses threads and it uses multiple processes. It handles all that complexity for you so that you can just focus on building your Rails app and not worry about managing processes. So Puma is really nice and it has a lot of nice features that I use in development also. You can look at the list of reasons why they think you should use Puma Dev and I'm sure there's a lot of valid reasons there. So like I said, your default Rails app is going to come with Puma. This tool will work with any app that uses Puma, but I'm going to obviously focus on Rails today. This is how I installed the Puma Dev tool, went without a hitch, and I've been using it since just a couple minutes after I ran that command. So I think that works really well. And there's a few setup steps. Don't ignore these setup steps, especially if you want the SSL. If you want the HTTPS URLs running on your local machine, definitely follow the instructions. This is the basic setup for Mac OS right up here. And then we just have a few notes on usage, setting environment variables, and things like that. Restarting, I'll show you a little bit about that as well. And I'll also show you how to look at the logs and do the normal debugging things because you will run into problems just like you would developing with Rails normally. So you want to be able to recover from those. It's a tool I couldn't tell you what the timeline is. I didn't go research it. I used to use this tool back in the day. POW was awesome. So this is the spiritual successor to the POW tool. I was really excited to find out that there was a tool that was still carrying the mantle of automatically managing my local apps so I don't have to. So this is the section on SSL if you want to read read about that. If you're using Webpack Dev Server, I haven't tried to use this with anything using that. If you are using Webpack Dev Server, you'll want to take a look at that. This is another nice tip. It's as simple as your app name, your IP address .xip.io or nip.io, and then you can access that from you know another machine on the local network without having to set up any other DNS or anything fancy on your local network. Very nice. Let's create a new Rails app. So now we're in here. The normal thing to do at this point, if you want to see your running app, would be to run Rails S. We see that we're running on local host, the 127.0.0.1, 3000. And there's our app. And you see when we make a request to the app, like refreshing the page, we get logs over here. That's exactly what we would expect. Okay, what does Puma Dev do for us? Once you have Puma Dev installed and configured, all you have to do is go to the directory of the app that you want to use and run Puma Dev link. And it tells you exactly where it linked it to. 
So you can see this is a symbolic link from this location in my home directory, which is the default place that Puma Dev will look for these apps. It's a symbolic link to my current Rails app directory. And that's all you need. You could make this symbolic link yourself manually, but I like the Puma Dev link command. It's simple, and I don't have to remember which side of the link command the target and the sim link is supposed to go. So that's very nice for my brain that has a hard time remembering that. Now let's take a look at how we would use that. If I refresh right now, I'm not running the Rails server, so it's not going to show it. But if I go test puma dev dot test, it will start the app for me and serve it on that domain. And again, without any extra configuration, I've also got HTTPS for free. So I promised that I would also show how to look at logs and things like that, because now when you're running it like Rails S, you see all the logs. So how do you get that when you're running it with Puma Dev? Well, we might forget sometimes that this log directory is here, but it is. And Rails will show you all the logs because they are output to this log slash development.log file. So you can run tail dash f log development.log and you get the same thing. When I refresh the page, I see that request go through on the logs. What if something really bad happens? So now I've got an exception being raised inside my application, so it shouldn't even boot. Well, I can still refresh what's going on with that. This is something you need to be aware of in your workflow when working with Puma Dev. Most of the time you don't have to worry about this, but if you make a change to the configuration that is not auto reloaded by Rails and its fancy Zeitwerk auto reloading configuration or machinery, then it will not be auto loaded in Puma-Dev. This is no different than if you were running it like Rails S. You know, if, if I comment that out, start the server and go to 3000 so I see I can load the application just fine if I change this little bit of configuration that would break loading my app it still loads just fine so what's up with that well rails isn't going to auto load those types of changes the changes to your configuration and your application those are not going to be auto loaded so what you would need to do is close that process and restart it and you see it's not running so it's not even going to load and it's broken and it gives you some helpful stack trace so that you can see oh no is being thrown on line 18 and you could go fix that however you need to fix it. Well how do you do this in the context of Puma Dev? It turns out Rails comes with a way of restarting itself that works even in this context of Rails server. So if we run Rails server again there's a command called Rails restart and you can see that it restarted the server. So what happens if I uncomment that and run Rails restart? Boom it tries to restart the server and it crashes. Now let's see what's going on here. Now we have the crash shown in the browser, unexpected exit, meaning it crashed, and it gives you this very unhelpful from the version of bundle that it's using to run the application. But that basically means when you see this screen, you're using Puma Dev, your Rails app crashed and it can't even boot. So what do you do then? You go to your home folder, which is this tilde slash library logs, Puma Dev dot log. Let's clean that up a little bit. Try to reload the page, which will make it attempt to start your app. And it says, unable to load application, runtime error, oh no. Let's comment that out, reload the page. And there we are, we're back in working order. So I just made a series of changes. I scaffolded out the example model, and these changes are all changes that you don't need to restart your application for. So let's refresh. We can run our pending migrations, and we see an example view that's been scaffolded out for us. And none of that required running Rails Restart. So that is a crash course on Puma Dev, and I believe that covers 90, 99% of your workflow when you're using that tool. There's nothing complicated. The most complicated thing is if your app actually crashes and won't boot you need to remember this trick it would be nice if that was more discoverable but if you just put this in an alias in your shell or however else you like to remember things and keep it handy it will serve you well and it'll be just as easy to debug as any other kind of thing and you can also always run it manually like this so that is Puma Dev in a nutshell I hope that you check it out let me know what you think about it tell me if the 
complexity that it added was worth it to you. Hopefully it's very minimal and I hope that it accelerates your development process and, and really makes you look like a pro out there. Anyway, with all that said, have a blessed week. Please like, subscribe, and I'll see you again next time. Thanks.